Meta Quest 3S has officially been announced. Positioned as Quest 3's little brother, it stands in the golden middle between Quest 2 and Quest 3 in a very intriguing way. Things look a bit different here because I'm recording this video from my hotel room after just having tried Quest 3S at Meta Connect, which I'm attending this year. More videos will be released in the coming days covering Meta Connect, but today is all about Quest 3S and my first thoughts about it after testing it, and I have lots. After all the leaks, Quest 3S has become a rather controversial device. I think a lot of people don't quite understand why it even exists. So I want to talk about that. While Meta keeps their users happy with a stream of new VR game releases, this year they are strategically focusing on expanding their VR user base with the new hardware rather than catering to existing, more advanced Quest 3 users. It is a very conscious decision. Quest 3S is set to attract new VR users, but also to encourage current Quest 2 owners to upgrade. And even though Quest 3S is not the sexiest VR device, it could be the most important VR tech released this year. I know you think I'm exaggerating, but to help you understand why I feel so strongly about this, I want to zoom in on the price to value ratio of Quest 3S. Essentially, what kind of a deal you're getting for its price. Quest 3S will be priced at 299 for 128 gigs and the 256 gigs at 399. Just to put it in perspective, when the Quest 2 launched, it was also 299 for 128 gigs, and at the time, that pricing drove millions of people to buy it, making it the most successful and popular consumer VR headset ever. But what about the value? Should Quest 2 owners upgrade to Quest 3S? This is where you need to look at gains versus compromises in making the switch. Among the gains, all Quest 3 exclusive titles will work on Quest 3S, as well as all the graphic updates on certain games released for Quest 3. For example, the first Quest 3 exclusive title is Starship Home, a mixed reality VR game which will be released tomorrow. By the way, keep an eye on this channel for gameplay coverage, it will be dropping. Another Quest 3 exclusive is Batman Arkham Shadows, which I got to play test yesterday, and it is an amazing game, truly incredible. But I know what you're thinking. Meta are pumping all of these Quest exclusives to alienate Quest 2 users and push them into buying a Quest 3 headset. And that definitely might be true, to an extent. Think about this. If you want truly superior VR and MR experiences, it needs superior hardware. And Quest 2 with the XR2 Gen 1 chip and 6 gigabytes of RAM is simply not it. Still, I asked and I was told that Meta are not currently planning to drop the support of Quest 2 anytime soon. And while I'm sure that this will happen the same way that it uh, happened to the original Oculus Quest, they simply don't have the date for this yet and I don't think it's gonna happen anytime soon. So if Quest 3S is a push towards transition, it's not as aggressive as it may seem. But Quest 3 and Quest 3S are simply so much more powerful than Quest 2 that to take advantage of the full power of this chipset with 8 gigs of RAM while also making a game playable on Quest 2 is impossible. Meta chooses to push the boundaries of the VR gaming at the expense of Quest 2 compatibility. And honestly, if it means that we're gonna get more games like Batman Arkham Shadows, then I say let them. But let me address the elephant in the room, which is lenses. In 2024, using Fresnel lenses to build a VR headset should be a crime. They are bulky, prone to god rays, have a smaller sweet spot and are quite blurry when you look at the edges. With pancake lenses already actively being used in the VR market and in Quest 3 especially, I am very disappointed that they are still not treated as the golden standard of VR moving forward, especially after Quest 3. It was okay in Quest 2, released four years ago, but now this feels extremely outdated. Still, despite their bulkier Fresnel lenses, they managed to keep Quest Quest 3S 20% slimmer than Quest 2, even though Quest 3 is, of course, still slimmer. But after comparing them side to side, even though the headsets themselves are quite different in thickness, both of them still have rather bulky facial interfaces, which means that when you wear them, they both feel about the same. But I'll talk about the accessories more later in the video. The display resolution remains the same on Quest 3S as on Quest 2 as well. So uh, basically, if you're upgrading from Quest 2, uh, there won't be any 
improvement in visual fidelity uh, due to hardware and even the field of view is also unchanged compared to Quest 2. So the real reason for the upgrade from Quest 2 is not the visual improvement due to hardware but the performance boost which will lead to improved gaming quality. Remember that with Quest 3 a whole bunch of VR games released their mind-blowing graphic performance upgrades that were previously unimaginable on Quest 2. Games like Red Matter 2, The Walking Dead, Pistol Whip, Zenith, Drop Dead The Cabin and so many others got substantial Quest 3 graphic performance updates that Quest 3S owners now will also be able to enjoy. So even though the hardware-related visuals remain on par with Quest 2, the software side of games will see a huge boost, with more impressive textures, reflections, shadows, dynamic lighting and many other cool features. It will also feature the same quality full-color mixed reality pass-through, even though the cameras are positioned differently on the headset to create this new spider-like visual look. I don't hate it. Still, I understand and agree that it is quite disappointing not to receive any cool new advanced VR headset this year. It seems like Meta took a year off from impressing hardcore VR gamers and instead shifted their attention to expanding their existing user base as well as transitioning current Quest 2 users into the Quest 3 family. Thinking about big picture though, Quest 2 and Quest 3 as of now are the most used VR headsets with Steam VR and their standalone first headsets. Quest 3S is likely to climb up that ladder too. And as for Quest 3, in an unexpected move, Meta has reduced its price from $649 to $499, which significantly narrows down the pricing gap between the 256GB model of Quest 3S and Quest 3, which by the way now comes in a single 500 112 gigabytes version. This price reduction puts a huge pressure on Meta's competitors, which is kind of scary. It is scary how Meta managed to monopolize mobile VR, and with great popularity comes great power that can be used in ways to help or hurt users, so we need to be vigilant. But the way we stand right now, Quest 3S is well on track to not only bring new people into VR, but make it more accessible and mainstream than ever before. And that's considering that I haven't even mentioned yet that they're offering Batman Arkham Shadows for free with the purchase of any device from the Quest 3 family through April 2025, which is, by the way, a very similar deal that they had last year with Asgard's Wrath 2. And also they'll throw in three months free of Meta Quest Plus. There's still a couple of more compromises to be mentioned, such as a lack of an audio jack on Quest 3S, meaning that you will need to use Bluetooth headphones if you don't want to use the built-in audio. The IPD adjustment also falls short, offering only three settings like Quest 2. But one extra thing that it gained is a dedicated mixed reality button located at the bottom. Physically clicking it will switch between the mixed reality and virtual reality modes, but tapping on your headset still works as well just like before. As for accessories, almost all accessories for Quest 3 will also work on Quest 3S, such as a head strap for example and controller grips because the controllers are the same on Quest 3S. But Quest 3S also introduced a new facial interface designed for fitness. It has this fabric-y mesh texture, uh, which supposedly allows your face and your eyes to breathe, reduces fogginess of the lenses, and in general you should be feeling less hot uh, working out or playing active games in VR. It also has a silicon part that goes around your face, but the catch is that this facial interface will not come in the box. You will need to purchase it separately, which is a shame because I did enjoy it more than the original facial interface. It's the same old story with Meta. They're basically selling their bare bones headset for dirt cheap while still encouraging you to buy expensive accessories to make your VR experience bearable. I personally despise the stock fabric head strap and it sucks that a lot of uh, Quest 3S users will try it on, uh, probably find it uncomfortable and maybe will never use it again. Maybe one day Meta will release a headset that is perfectly comfortable uh, right out of the box uh, and uh, honestly first impressions are so important and uh, uh, that day simply hasn't arrived yet. Will I recommend Quest 3S to my friends? I absolutely will. But it's a shame that it doesn't have the same wow factor of clarity and sharpness as the pinky lenses of Quest 3, so Quest 3 will always, always be my first choice. Especially because 100 US dollars is not that much of a difference. I feel like pinky lenses would seriously push the widespread adoption of VR. And I'm a bit worried that uh, blurry Fernell 
lenses with a small sweet spot will perpetuate the myth that VR is an underbaked technology that causes motion sickness and headaches. But it is a cool toy to buy for your kids or for someone who's only started to explore a VR world. Let's hope that the next generation of VR consumer tech will not need to compromise lens quality to achieve an affordable price point. But still, the way we stand now, Quest 3S is an outstanding device, considering its price versus the value it brings. And you can play PC VR games on it, don't forget that, especially some amazing open world games that are absolutely breathtaking in VR. I've recently made a list of the best open world VR games that you can play on Quest headsets and on Steam VR, so if you're looking for expansive virtual worlds to dive in, look no further. I'll see you there.